At this point, you're probably wondering if we can make the choice as consumers between genetically modified food and non-genetically modified food. And what we found out is that unlike many other countries in the world, there's no law in the United States that requires genetically modified foods to be labeled. How could this be? Well, in 1992, George Bush Sr. signed an executive order that deemed genetically modified or genetically engineered food to be equal to non-genetically modified food. The order affirmed genetic modification as safe. And because of this executive order, the biotech companies were able to submit GMO foods as being substantially equivalent to non-GMO foods. Because they're substantially equivalent, the Food and Drug Administration is able to classify these products under the generally recognized as safe category. And under this category, the government doesn't require any additional testing or labeling. Another interesting thing we found is that every genetically modified seed has been patented. The ironic part about this is that in order to patent anything, a product must be unique. Well, this presents quite the conundrum. If these seeds are different enough to patent, then how can they be substantially equivalent to other crops? We found one organization that has taken initiative to give consumers a choice in the matter called the Non-GMO Project. The Non-GMO Project provides an independent verification process to food distributors who don't use genetically modified foods in order to put a GMO-free label on their packaging. This allows consumers to choose to eat non-genetically modified food. We sat down with director Megan Thompson to hear more. It has to do with economics, and it has to do with social influences. You see in, in this country a lot, people are just so overworked and stressed out and it's really hard to think about anything beyond the immediate. Basically, it's estimated that upwards of 70% of the processed food in the average grocery store contains GMOs. And in 2007, 91% of the soy, 87% of the cotton, 73% um, of the corn grown in the U.S. were genetically modified. There's also a lot of the canola, um, Hawaiian papaya, crookneck squash were also genetically modified. And in 2008, sugar beets for the first time are being commercially produced GMO. So there was a CBS New York Times poll done last spring, early summer, where 54% of Americans said that they would not eat genetically modified organisms, which obviously indicates that they don't realize that they already are eating GMOs. And in polls consistently close to and upwards of 90% of people say that they think there should be labeling or that they don't want them. Well, I draw a distinct difference between medical biotechnology and agricultural biotechnology. The biggest challenge around agricultural biotechnology is that it's out in the open. There is cross-pollination that can't be controlled. You know, you're subjecting the seeds to being blown by the wind. It's really different than something that's controlled in a laboratory. There is no ability really, especially with corn pollen, which can travel for miles and miles and miles. Um, there's no way to really keep that contained when it's being grown out in the open. And so there could be advantages in the future. I will say that right now, there are basically two traits that GMOs are being bred for. One is to produce Bt toxin in their own DNA, so basically they're producing a pesticide. The other is that they are grown to resist high applications of Roundup Ready. Glyphosate is the chemical in that. Roundup Ready corn, Roundup Ready soy, those are being produced by companies that also produce the chemicals. And so you can see the very clear advantage for those companies. Well, California is actually ahead of the curve in some ways in that a bill was just passed, AB 541, which prevents biotech companies for, from suing farmers when there is GM contamination in the fields. Um, 
it's a first step. It's interesting because in, there's some countries in Europe where say an organic farmer is growing soybeans and they find contamination from genetically modified soy, they actually have the right to sue the biotech company and say, you know, you contaminated my crop, you disrupted my livelihood. Um, that is certainly not the case in this country. Actually, the opposite has happened a lot where biotech companies um, have found contamination that's happened through, say, wind, you know, un unwanted, uncontrolled cross-pollination, and then they actually sue the farmer because they have patented those seeds, then they sue the farmer and say, you're using our seeds without permission. And so what this bill does in California is it protects farmers from those lawsuits. Well, basically the precautionary principle just says that until you really know that something is safe, that you don't unleash it. That's not what's happened in this country. The studies that the government has used to approve GMOs have generally been provided by the companies that have created them, and so there's some concern that there's a lack of peer-reviewed science behind those approvals. So in Europe, basically, the approach has been as a result of public demand about you know, their food choices and what they put in their body that they want to see more, more evidence and more scientific study before they're um, consuming GMOs on a wide scale. And you know, there's other, other countries that have specifically said that they will watch this country and see what happens to children in this country. So it seems like all these other countries in the world are keeping an eye on America. But what's our government doing about this? Well, in 1999, Dennis Kucinich introduced H.R. 3377, the Genetically Engineered Food Right to Know Act. It was never voted on and eventually expired. Still persevering, Dennis Kucinich has introduced three similar bills in July of 2008, designed to protect consumers, defend farmers' rights, and protect food safety. They are titled H.R. 6636, the Genetically Engineered Food Right to Know Act, H.R. 6635, the Genetically Engineered Safety Act, and H.R. 6637, the Genetically Engineered Farmer Protection Act. These bills are still only in the first step of the legislative process in the House. If you want to make an impact, inform your friends and family about this issue. You can also go to our Tools of Action section below and inform our elected representatives just how important it is to you to have a choice of what we put into our bodies.